Good, good afternoon. Um, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Dr. Zay Hawass, for uh, all the good work for more than 16 years together. Thank you, RCE, for the nice organization. Uh, without any delay, let's start. Truly, the most important treasures in KV62, Tutan Khamun's mummy and the two mummified fetuses his daughters. The agenda of this presentation is talking a little bit about Tutankhamun and also about his daughters. If you look at the feet of the mummy of Tutankhamun and even back in the uh, uh, pictures in 1925, you can notice that there are asymmetry in the, in the feet to say the least. The CT images actually show flurring of the toes of the left foot. The second uh, uh, toe is short and is formed of only two bones instead of the normal three phalanges, a congenital anomaly called oligodactyly. In contrast to the normal appearance of the other metatarsals in both feet, uh, this is at the top of the, uh, of the uh, uh, image, you will find that the left second and third metatarsal heads are severely deformed and show mixed high and low bone densities, indicating that the blood was not going well there and it caused bone death or bone necrosis. This is called Freiburg disease. It's a bone necrosis results from insult during bone growth. This could be genetic, as it is seen in twins, but could be due to, due to repetitive trauma or even acute trauma. Also, we can see that the left foot shows mild rotation of the forefoot inwards. The scientific team, we had a debate about that, if this deformity was truly a club foot or just an acquired thing during mummification. But with the presence of mildly abnormal left foot measurements, combined with the presence of other congenital changes that we mentioned, this we, we favored the consensus diagnosis of a mild club foot. However, there are no evidence of ankle arthritis or uh, bone changes at the ankle. Uh, these are a known long-term effect of walking on the side of the foot. So the club foot, if it, is, if it was there, did not cause significant gait disturbance. But this was in 2005. Now in 2022, there are more advanced investigations that we can do to know better if this is really a club foot or just a mere uh, deformity from the uh, mummification. So it's not the uh, end yet. Tut may have benefited though from using a walking stick because of this presence of Freiburg or the osteonecrosis. Uh, this must have caused him pain that was worse when bearing foot while walking. It's not the club foot issue. It's actually the Freiburg. There are archaeological evidence that shows Tut standing and leaning on the stick in a drawing on the top of the ivory box, on the north wall of the burial chamber, and also in several statues. Tut's foot condition did not prevent him from practicing in activities. He was really an active teenager. He had six um, chariots in his, uh, uh, in his uh, tomb for, uh, for hunting safaris, though he may prefer sitting to standing at times. The 130 sticks found inside Tut's tomb, some could have been walking aids, but definitely more likely Tut An Khamun used many of these as royal apparatus for rituals and public appearances. Had Tut been mummified badly or in a hurry? We had the great, great opportunity to study more than 40 royal mummies of the New Kingdom over 16 year uh, period with the, the Egyptian Mummy Project headed by Dr. Zay Hawass. So uh, 
how does tut mummification stack up against the other royals, the great royals, Ramses the Great, uh, Ramses the Third? How did he do? Let's start with uh, the mummy of Amenhotep the First, the second. Uh, king in the New Kingdom, he started the vogue of crossing arms in front of the chest to be followed by other New Kingdom kings. Accepted. Tut's mummy's uh, forearms crossed transversely across the waist. Unique. The royal mummies, uh, I, I, had, I had also studied the brain mummification in all the uh, royal mummies, uh, and uh, starting from the earlier New Kingdom, when the brain was still there, then the brain was removed, as uh, uh, Dr. Ashraf mentioned from the nose, like here in Tuya, uh, mentioned, uh, and then they, after removal of the brain oxygenation, material were, were, were uh, uh, inserted inside the uh, skull. Usually, what was inserted inside the skull was left at the back of the skull, except it. Inside his exerbrated skull, Tut had two resin levels with different CT densities, indicating that they were introduced on two separate occasions. This is 3D re CT reconstruction and uh, the uh, different color denoting different densities. It, is, it was not colored by us. It was just uh, a reflection of the density uh, transferred into color. The resin was poured from the nose while the head was lying flat to rest at the back of the skull. And then the head was lowered uh, down and the resin uh, then uh, poured from the nose to line the, the inside of the top of the skull. This, if it denotes something, it would denote that there is an extra attention from the embalmers for Tut. Not giving him on one helping of resin, but give him two. We published this work, uh, The Variability of Brain uh, Treatment, in the American Journal of Rhinology in 2013. Tooth's evisceration wound is also unique. It extends diagonally from the navel downwards uh, to the left iliac crest. Unlike other royal mummies who have their incision in the left flank or the inguinal region. This is definitely unique. Tot's torso also cavity is completely filled with linen and expensive resin, indicating that he was mummified to a high standard. But look at the arch distribution of the material at the back. It could indicate a partially preserved diaphragm but the embalmers could have entered the chest from the abdomen by making an opening in the anterior diaphragm. We cannot be conclusive about that because all of the anterior chest is currently missing. Comparing with the picture of 2005 and, and in 1926, there, the defective in the front of the chest of Tutankhamun is more apparent in the recent uh, photo. This is something that we will discuss uh, uh, later. Some also claim that Tut's mummification was improper because the embalmer used an excessive amount of resin. But if you remember that resin was an extremely expensive imported material. And this is the mummy of Siti the first, one of the most beautiful and high quality uh, um, um, mummification and it contains a large amount of resin that it even penetrated the bone. But despite of that, it was beautifully mummified. So, using resin on tot was not a faulty uh, technique. The tot's male organ or the phallus was uh, mummified in 90 degree angle. Now we, it's not there to, to identify, but it was uh, uh, documented in the photographs, uh, it could resemble Osiris as uh, we see in the uh, City One temple in, in Abydos. I was just there and, and had a look at uh, this uh, image. But I want to tell you something, that the male organs of the other royal mummies were also mummified and material were inserted uh, inside but not in a 90 degree as in, uh, in Tut, but rather in a flaccid way.
Who are they? Amen Hotub the first, Tohotmos the first, Tohotmos the second, Yuya, Merim Betah, and Ramses the third. But definitely the, uh, or the, 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 the position of the male organ in Tut is uh, unique. Also, uh, our CT scans in the Egyptian Mummy project revealed, and for the first time, that the embalmers used feathers beneath the skin to beautify the faces and the bodies of the New Kingdom royal mummies. This study refuted previous assumptions that such technique, which is subcutaneous packs, began in the 21st dynasty. No, it's earlier. It's in the New Kingdom. We published this work in the Journal of Computed Assisted Tomography in 2015. And here is the, the, the 3D CT and 2, C, uh, 2 CT images of the Hotmos III, revealing the king had subcutaneous packing to fill the area around the nose and the mouth, just a limited uh, a way of subcutaneous packing. But here, look at Tut. Tut Ancha Amun, the embalmers, pressed the subcutaneous fillers extensively in three regions, around the nose and the mouth, in the cheeks, and in the temporal region. The same areas that modern plastic surgeons would do for a, a total uh, face uh, lift. Very few mummies of the new kingdom received this uh, unique face job with the three regions. Tutankhamun was one of them. Who are the rest three? Ramses III, Siti I, and Berim Betah. So by that, Tutankhamun's mummification was unique, but definitely not rushed or faulty, on the contrary. Now Tut got a face for his anniversary. Facial reconstruction depends on the uh, CT scan of his uh, mummy, a project that uh, I did with Dr. Uh, Zahi Hawass. And uh, now we had the actual printing of the skull and the uh, reconstruction of the muscles. We did not rely on European or global measurements or even North African measurements. We relied on, in, uh, on Egyptian uh, muscle, uh, muscles uh, uh, measurements. And uh, this, uh, we, we built the face, uh, the PBS documented uh, this project. This project, I did it with, uh, uh, with an anthropologist and uh, uh, an, an artist, a forensic artist from Canada. And uh, PBS uh, uh, will document the project and it will be aired on November 23rd, so watch it. Now, in the treasury of the tomb, of Tutankhamun was a wooden box, non-decorated wooden box, designated by Carter with the number 317. Contained two many anthropoid coffins inscribed as the Osiris, um, assigned as A and B. In 1925, the wooden box was sent to Cairo, to Qasr al-Aini Faculty of Medicine, my, uh, my institute to be examined by Douglas Derry, the professor of anatomy there, who also adopted King Tutankhamun. Inside the nested coffins were two mini mummies. The mummies were female fetuses at five months and seven months of gestation. Derry autopsy uh, said that. Both mummies at that time were in excellent conditions. Even the eyelashes of the two fetuses were there. The larger fetus, Baby B, was x-rayed in 1979 and diagnosed by this x-ray with multiple congenital anomalies, uh, in, uh, ele elevated left shoulder and uh, open uh, vertebrae. The fetuses were left and forgotten in uh, the uh, anatomy department in, uh, in Qasr al-Aini till uh, uh, Dr. Zay Hawass in 2008 uh, decided to CT scan them, and uh, here we are. The CT images revealed that both mummies now were in very poor condition with multiple post-mortem fractures caused by there is autopsy, but also by the faulty storage of the fetuses. They were considered uh, maybe as if uh, they are an ordinary uh, uh, anatomy specimen. 
This is the, the two-dimensional and, and three-dimensional of the smaller uh, mummy, 317A, also in bad, very bad condition, as Dr. Zahi uh, showed to us yesterday. Now it's even worse at, uh, at the uh, gem. And uh, the, uh, the other fetus, the baby B, uh, also post-mortem fractures, but maybe she was in a better condition than her daughter. This was the first CT scan of an ancient mummified fetus ever in the world. So I didn't have a clue. There was no literature, no methodology, nothing to guide me through this. So I, I had to invent a novel methodology based on the forensic methods of identification of dumped abortus and also on imaging of a developing fetus. So I used several methods to estimate the age, including, including using charts to compare the lengths of both mummies' long bones and the timely appearance of teeth buds. And the bone centers uh, assigned me the estimation of fetal age. Like, like their father, also the, uh, the wisdom teeth and the, the fusion of bone at the knees helped us in Tutan Khamun's identification of age. Also similarly, the two little girls. I also used the different appearance of, uh, or the changing appearance of the developing fetal bones, the rest, the pelvis and the ankle, to um, have uh, the score of the Stemfeld score, which is a score that helped me also to identify the, uh, to assess uh, the uh, age. I was able to more accurately estimate the gestational age of the fetuses using all these methods to 25 and 37 weeks of gestation, much older than that uh, Derry estimated. He estimated that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the larger fetus was uh, seven months. No, she was actually nine months. She was just about to, to be born. The royal fetuses have been shrouded in mystery since their discovery. The, uh, the baby bee, was thought even to be an alien due to its enlarged head and almond-shaped eyes. The presence of the dagger made of uh, meteorite iron in the uh, tomb of Tutankhamun fueled this uh, theory. However, these CT findings reveal that the, the post-mortem fractured skull and orbits were to be blamed for this appearance. This is a, 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 a cinematic 3D CT image, more advanced image uh, CT uh, uh, formulation of the image that show very well uh, what happened to the uh, skull from the trauma. Also, CT ruled out all the anomalies suggested by the 1979. Remember the elevated shoulder and the open uh, um, uh, spine? No, actually post-mortem fractures, uh, not shoulder or spine anomalies, were responsible for the elevated left shoulder and open vertebrae, and there were no anomalies detected in the skeleton or what's remaining. Each fetus mummy has placed in nested coffins with a golden mask in a royal fashion, similar to their father. The cinematic 3D CT shows incredible details of the mummy's surface. Look at it. The tiny fetus B was mummified in the royal manner. The viscera were removed via a, an opening in the left inguinal incision. And the torso was even packed with, uh, with uh, uh, linen and with the resin material similar to their father. The dense materials found inside the skull most likely indicate a sort of brain treatment during mummification. The royal fetus, like her father, also had extensive subcutaneous packing. Here I show it in her lower limbs, just like her daddy. The younger uh, royal fetus also, there are evidence that she got brain treatment because of the densities in the skull. And she got uh, uh, visceral packs, evisceration and visceral packs, as well as subcutaneous uh, packing in a, a royal style. We, we published this work in the American Journal of Rangonology in 2011. Now, as you can see, that CT scanning of these fetuses enable us to visualize Tutankh Amun as a father. We can imagine the royal couple happiness and anticipation of the delivery of their children. And Toots' grief over losing the two royal fetuses. One of them was so close to the due date. Imagine if Toots Amun's daughters lived. 
the history of ancient Egypt would have changed dramatically. Thank you very much.